You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it, you got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out, basic to complex. This is Options Bootcamp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, the Options Bootcamp drill instructors will break it all down for you. Now, let's get you into peak options trading shape. Here are your Options Bootcamp drill instructors, All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again. Time to roll out the old drill instructor proving ground for a little bit of the old options boot camp. Everyone's favorite. I know it's my favorite options education program. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the TAG optionsinsider.com, as well as from the network upon which so many of you folks are binging out there these days. Of course, if you want to join us. For example, like for today's live double header of Options Bootcamp, of which this is episode two, you want to get access to pro Q&As, you want to get access to Options Oddities every week, as well as by the time you're listening to this, you should have access on the pro side to that sweet panel that I am doing tomorrow here in Chicago, but will be on the feed a week in the past by the time you're listening to this <laughs> on the old on-demand side out there, listeners. Only one place to go to get access to all that cool stuff. Giveaways, all sorts of fun. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. The place to go to check out all of that fun. It's a new year. Try out some fun new stuff over there in the land of the pro. A good bunch of people you're going to hang out with over there as well. And uh, speaking of hanging out with people, I am also joined by my black-hatted compatriot in all things options educational crime. He is Mr. Dan Passarelli from Market Taker Mentoring. Mr. P, welcome back to the show, sir. It is great to be back, Mark. Uh, as I understand it, we've got a good show here planned, uh, and I'm looking forward to that. Have you recovered from our tail risk deep dive extravaganza, sir? Yeah, I had to take a few Xanax, but I'm okay now. <laughs> You're coming back off the, the other end of that now. Well, let's see if we can keep you nice and happy here with some listener love. Remember, if you like the show... Any platform you get it on now. We talked about Twitter last episode. Let's even let's go out to LinkedIn. Why not, Mr. Dan? Uh, people engage with our content even there, believe it or not. Uh, we have Don R. chiming in saying, this is the best options podcast on the planet. Keep up the good work. Wow, Dan, that's high praise, sir. Best on the planet. Wow, wow. That's, that's pretty dumb. That's I'm something. He's honored. Not, he's, he is not mincing words there. Thank you, Don R. And everyone else who takes the time out of your busy day, not just to listen but to rate and review on whatever platform you engage with this content on. At the end of the day, all of it does help new people continue to discover the content, even if we are indeed the best options podcast on the planet. Who am I to dispute our very intelligent and discerning listeners as we keep on rolling right on into the mail call? Mail call. Time to look at questions submitted by our listeners. All right, everybody, welcome to the mail call, the portion of the show where you folks take the range, your questions, your comments. We also turn the spotlight back on you and occasionally on the black-hatted one himself, Mr. P. Dan, last week we got so busy 
with our deep dive into tail wrist that we didn't get a chance for what the people are really coming to the show for, which is their market taker question of the week. So have at it, sir. What you got for them this week? Dan, what um, moving averages do you typically use? And so I use, and this is for my trading and invest and investing. I use the 21 day, the 50 day and the 200 day. I use the, now, even though for my trading, none of my trades are 200 trading days long, you know, like a year. Um, that's only my investment, but I still use it as a, um, support and resistance, uh, which becomes very relevant. Um, the 50 day moving average also I use as support and resistance, but the 21 day I, I do look at for breakouts and such. So what you meant to say when someone asked you that question, Dan, is none. And then you smack them in the face, right? And laugh maniacally. That's, that's your usual answer, right? I, I have been known to do that, but um, that's only when I've been drinking and I never drink before <laughs> three o'clock. Never before this show, listeners, which may sound surprising given some of his answers on the show that he's not <laughs> drinking all the time, listeners. But you know what? A Dan has pledged for 2024. No day drinking, no NyQuil before the show either. That was a problem last year. But, you know, we're going to work through all that, listeners. As we keep on rolling, let's get to some of the questions we've been asking you folks out there, which there are a ton that we have to pay off. Uh, we've been we've been busy. I've been down in the Southern studio. We've been gallivanting around out there. So we haven't had a chance to pay off a bunch of them. Let's go out to our, our kickoff for the year, Dan. Uh, a week and change ago, we asked our audience our annual sentiment poll to kick off the year. We said, hey, time it once again for our annual sentiment poll. Quite simply, if you have to buy a 10% out of the money call expiring at the end of the year on one of the following asset classes, which one would you choose? We gave you four choices, volatility, so VIX or whatever you choose out there. Uh, equities could be indexes, could be whatever you like. Fixed income could be 10-year, 30-year, we don't judge. Or crypto could be Bitcoin, ETH, Solana, whatever floats your boat out there. And Dan, at the end of the day, volatility took it with 42% of the audience going that way, followed by exactly a third, 33% for standard, plain, old vanilla equities. A 17% coming in for crypto, so crypto coming in hotter than it has in the past. And no love for fixed income, only 8% going the 10-year route. Mr. Dan, does that surprise you? Are folks loving themselves a little bit of upside vol action this year? Yeah, man, that is uh, that is pretty interesting. Um, but, you know, I mean, hey, um, I, I, I can definitely see it. I can definitely see it. We've got... Uh, this is going to be an interesting year, man. It's going to be an interesting year. That it is. So, yes. And I can also see, I think there's some mechanical side to that as well. When we posted this, VIX was around a 12 and a half. So it could easily move 1.2 points in an afternoon, right? So <laughs> that's a little bit easier to capture than maybe some of these other things we're talking about out there as well. Uh, we also asked our audience, Dan, uh, this was right before the big approval came in. Well, actually, no, I'm sorry, this is after, because we asked it right about the, right after the approval. We said, hey, now that the spot Bitcoin ETF is finally approved, obviously this went live for our audience last week. Time for our crypto annual sentiment poll. Quite simply, will Bitcoin close positive on the year? Heck yes, heck no, or I don't trade crypto. And Dan, 57% of our audience, maybe they're just caught up in the crypto euphoria, but over half, well over half, choosing heck yes, Bitcoin going to close positive on the year. A quarter, 25% saying they don't touch the stuff, and 18% saying, heck no. Mr. Dan, hardcore crypto holdler that you are, what are your thoughts on those somewhat surprising results, sir? Hmm, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. You know, uh, I it's, it's really hard for me to see crypto a year from now. Um, I think it's easier to see it five years from now than one year from now in a lot of ways. Um, especially since we ended 2023 at a pretty lofty level as people were buying the rumor of the, um, Bitcoin ETFs coming out. And then, you know, we had a little bit of sell the news. Uh, I don't know, man, I, this is just one of those where I wish I could just state a really 
strong, brilliant opinion, but I, I don't have one, man. Man, speaking of that, has there been a better buy the rumor and sell the fact trade than Bitcoin over the past few weeks uh, leading up to that announcement? And then they just cut the legs out from under right afterwards. So I think we have a listener question about that. So we won't go won't go too deep into that now. But that's been a great example of that offset market adage out there. Listen, let's keep rolling. This was just a fun one we did, Dan. I want to get your thoughts on it. Our listeners thoughts as well on the old options boot camp side uh, during our volatility views show, which if you're intrigued. By volatility, you like talking about things like VIX and upside calls and all these things going on out there, the ETPs, the inverse products, and everything else, uh, then you should be checking out Volatility Views. We record it live every Friday. It goes out to the podcast network. Again, why I say if you're listening to this show, you should be listening to the whole freaking network. whole bunch of great stuff coming at you. During that show, Dan, we saw a huge block, the biggest single print of VIX options in history, and someone bought 250000 of the Feb 17s expiring on Valentine's Day for 67 cents. So we put it out to our audience, Dan. We said, what do you what do you think about these? Would you rather buy them or sell them? Uh, which way would you go, Dan? I'm curious. And then which way do you think our audience was going? Wait a minute. Which ones are these again? These are the Feb 17s. They bought 250,000 of them for 67 cents. Buy them or sold to you, Dan. Oh, my gosh. Um, geez, Louise. The, uh... I don't, I mean, sell maybe, oh, geez, that's, that is, that is really a tough one. It is indeed. Our audience was pretty close to split for most of it. They ended up coming out 58% saying they wanted to buy them and wow. uh, 42% saying sold to you. Again, there is no right answer there. Listeners just trying to gauge your sentiment. We were joking, Dan, that that's 50 cent. He's back and just adjusted for inflation now to 67 cents as opposed to 50. <laughs> but uh, a fun one out there. Let's fast forward to this week's actual question. And Dan, I, I do want an answer from you on this one. And again, kind of a fun one, which pertains to the audience of this program out there right now, uh, which is quite simply, it's a brand new trading year. Which option strategy do you anticipate using the most? Throughout 2024, and again, if we don't see your exact favorite, you can always write in or DM with it as well. A lot of you have taken that option. Uh, we gave you a bunch of, tried to squeeze as many as we could into four choices. Uh, so we gave you the long call or long put or vertical in either direction for those, or the covered call or short put or vertical, again, for whichever one you want, or the straddle slash strangle slash butterfly, so more high premium or indeed premium selling type strategies or indeed the spreads with wings or dan's personal favorite the calendar slash diagonal mr dan what is your vote and more importantly what do you think our audience is voting for what are they using the most this year what are they planning to use the most um i mean for me for my answer <clears throat> i think it's going to be it's going to be the same as last year um so it's probably going to be I mean, it'll certainly be a lot of covered calls and, and cash cured puts in my IRA. Credit spreads are one of the more common ones that I do for my trading. And then calendars, especially when we come up upon earning season like we are now. Um, yeah, I, I don't really foresee me steering the ship in a profoundly different direction this year. Uh, I hope to see some extra like straddle plays, but you know, they're, they're always few and far between. So I'm going to put you down for the uh, short put covered call category. Does that sound right? Yeah, that sounds about right. And we think our audience is there too. <sighs> you know? Yeah. I mean, statistically that is one of the more active, actively traded strategies. So yeah, probably. All right. You are coming in at number two. Finger just off the pulse of our audience this week, Dan. Uh, the number one choice, nearly half of you, 47.8% choosing your straight up long calls or long puts or verticals, Dan. They're not really going too crazy. They want to go straight to the long call, long put or vertical. And hey, we can't blame you at the end of the day. If that was That's what works for you out there. Followed by your choice for number two, Dan, 30.4% coming in for the covered call or short put or vertical. And then 13% for the straddles, strangles, and butterflies, and only 8.7%, which I knew it would be low, for calendars and diagonals. Again, more of a 201 or indeed even a 301 type strategy out there. Let's keep rolling to some of our listener questions out there. I said we had a listener question about uh, the Bitcoin thing, so let's get into this one now. I like this handle, too. Crazy beef. <laughs> 
<laughs> if your handle brings a chuckle to my face, then good chance you're going to make it on the show, listener. So Crazy Beef says, Bitcoin has been on a massive run over the last month with the approval potentially days away. Obviously, this came in about a week ago, listeners. Uh, what are your thoughts on playing the ETF approval using options? Well, this is one of the downsides or perhaps the upsides uh, of being off for a couple of weeks from the live side is sometimes these questions fall through the cracks. Uh, I had prepared when this came in a whole bunch of analysis of the skew out there in terms of historical and products like Bitto or even in products like Mara, which are two very popular vectors for you folks to be trading options on in terms of crypto related accounts, but in your securities account. But that said, Dan, we don't need any of that because <laughs> we have the answer now. And it was along the lines of what I was going to advocate uh, last week as well, which is you, in this scenario, you do have to be very much aware of the old buy the rumor, sell the fact type development. And that's exactly what we saw out here in Bitcoin in particular. This thing just plummeted. So if you were coming in and you were buying a very inflated vol level, which we saw out there in some of these names out there. Let's see, where were we? Let's just look at Bitto. Yeah, the, the Bitto 30-day vol, when this question came in, was a 68.1%. That puts it in the 95th percentile for the past year. So if you bought that vol expecting some massive upside move, for example, which I'm sure that's the way most of you were going to play this, uh, yeah, you, you really got run over on this one because the vol imploded and, of course, Bitcoin sold off four or five, 6,000 handles uh, from the levels it was at when this question came in. So, uh, unfortunately, a bit of a challenge. Same thing out there with our good buddy, Mara. Mara was at 164% from a 30-day vol perspective. And that puts it at the 98th percentile. <laughs> from an overall vol level so yeah these were expensive trades to put on unfortunately they didn't really work out so if you were one of these folks looking to load up on these uh, that we, we would have counseled that of course uh, to be cautious with this trade and that turned out to be exactly the case dan did you have any of your mentees over there in mtm land try to take a run at this and what are your thoughts for crazy beef he was looking to maybe uh, take a tilt at some upside call windmill let's hope he didn't sir yeah, you know, it's super important to kind of crunch the numbers when it comes to straddles uh, or I mean, I guess just option buying regardless, you know, like if I'm right, <laughs> will I make money uh, is the, the kind of question you have to ask yourself a lot with with buying options, you know, especially like calls because you're bullish or is the implied volatility just going to crush any hopes of me making money on on delta because they're so gosh darn expensive so it's um it's you know always take it that thought iteration further instead of just hey i think it's going up let's buy calls like the reason we have those other greeks is because they matter so make sure you look at the at the whole holistic picture i heard a ding what you trading what you buying what you selling sir Oh, uh, that was just uh, a red knockout uh, trade, I think. Nothing fun. No crazy, yeah. no crazy raider trades to talk about with our listeners out there. Let's, let's go back to the listeners. Let's go out to this one. Another good handle, Felix Augustus. He's got a bit of a wonkier question out there, listeners. If you don't understand it, it's okay. You can listen to shows like Vol Views if you want to go a little bit deeper on this. We put out a question of the week at the end of the year, I should say last year. Again, kind of getting wonky talking about inverse vol products like SVIX, which we have talked about a few months ago on this show. Go look at the archives for our volatility episode. And we talked about inverse volatility products like SVIX, which is, of course, VIX goes up, SVIX goes down, and vice versa. But this, obviously, VIX can explode. And in those cases, these products can go to zero. And we have seen that happen back in 2018, the Balmageddon. There was a product very similar to this, called XIV, which when VIX exploded up to around 80, <laughs> XIV went the way of the dodo. So that's always a concern with these products. And so what we have seen SVIX do recently, just in the last couple of months, is start adding some upside VIX calls to its holdings. SVIX, if you're not familiar, tries to replicate that inverse functionality, usually using VIX futures. Now they're adding some long, out-of-the-money VIX calls to that equation, usually not that far out. Right now they're holding, uh, we're in mid-January, and they're holding the February calls to the upside out there. 
So it's an interesting one. We asked you folks if that makes you more or less likely to trade it. And exactly half of you, 50% said more likely because it's safer. Uh, 30% saying less likely, poor tracking. And then 20% saying you don't want to touch it. You're still gun shy after XIV back in 2018. And hey, I can't blame you for that one either. Which raised a good question. Felix Augustus saw this poll and he responded to it saying, thanks for the heads up about this. He wanted to know, could that mean this problem might have options decay issues similar to the 2X and 3X levered products? I wouldn't go that, that far. You're not loading up with the options the way you would. Those other products you're talking about are heavily levered using options. And that's where you see a lot of those decay issues pop up there. I don't think you're going to be heading down a similar road just by adding a few out of the money calls to SVIX. That said, it is still an open question and one that I still have. And this is a fairly new development. We only have about a month and change worth of data in our back pockets to see the impact. But one of the questions I have when they first announced this was, is this going to gum up the works from a tracking perspective? Is SVIX not going to perform as reliably in terms of an inverse product as it did in the past because of this addition of the out of the money calls? And that's the question I still have. Obviously, for half of our audience, it's not a concern because at the end of the day, their biggest concern when holding this underlying is it goes to zero. So if that's your biggest concern, maybe you're willing to give up a little bit of tracking. And again, that's not a certainty. We don't really know for sure yet, but it's a possibility and probably a likely one, a small, small bit of impact on the tracking. Is that a worthwhile trade-off to have a product that now won't go to zero, at least theoretically? For half of you, the answer was yes. Dan, I know this is a bit of a wonky question and not one we typically debate on this show, but a fun one, and he sent it in here. What are your thoughts on this notion of an inverse vol product like SVIX adding VIX calls as a bit of a defense mechanism? And B, as Felix Augustus wants to know, do you think that might add some decay issues to the product overall? You know, I would like to see um, like what the logic is as far as exactly how it's constructed, because, you know, I mean, it's not like fund managers just like, well, I don't know, maybe I'll buy some calls sometime. Like I I'm sure there's a methodology to it. <clears throat> and I'd kind of like to, to understand what that is. To me, it seems a little weird, you know, like I have a hard time seeing how that makes it, you know, track better. Um, to me, it seems like it's, it would be a little bit more convoluted, but you know, I mean, the super smart people who run funds like this, maybe, <clears throat> maybe they thought it through really, really well. And, and, and it does track better. Maybe they did some, you know, back testing to, you know, see, Hey, if I would have bought these calls and this methodology in the past, would it have tracked better? And I'm sure they did that. I don't know if it's in the prospectus or not. I would doubt that the exact methodology is in the prospectus. But when it comes to any of these volatility products, <clears throat> they're just really darn complicated. And like, there's no wing in it. Like you need to literally read the prospectuses of these things and really try and wrap your head around them. Otherwise, you're just like, you know, like you have no chance of making money. I'm looking at the said prospectus right now, they are along 24,700 of the Feb 26 calls in VIX for a notional value of $667,000, listeners. So that could be some drag on the returns, just shelling out for that as well out there. But again, if you have a one massive risk to your product at the end of the day, that it could all blow up, and this is the way you could take that off the table. Maybe maybe they were tapped on the shoulder and said, hey, you know, from a risk perspective, we need you to do this from a clearing or from a margin or just maybe some other behind the scenes discussion that we are not privy to here. They were maybe had their arm twisted into doing this. Either way, it's there now. And it's certainly an interesting question to keep an eye on when we have more data. Uh, who is that? Felix Augustus. We will certainly come back and talk about it. Probably on Vol Views. Maybe not here unless we get another question. But if this kind of stuff intrigues you listeners, by all means, check out Vol Views. We get kind of wonky over there sometimes. Don't be scared. It's all fun stuff. Uh, speaking of fun stuff, Dan, I'm going to let you put on your panelist hat here for a minute here. Because I said I'm doing a big panel tomorrow. By the time you're listening to this on demand, that'll be a week in the past, listeners, with our buddy, the Flowmaster from SIBO and JJ from IG, now formerly of TD Ameritrade, and Greg from Amber Data does a lot of the crypto vol. We're going to talk about a lot of fun stuff. In fact, we, we put out a, 
a poll to our audience saying, hey, you know, there's a lot of fun stuff, a lot of hot stuff going on in the world of options right now. Almost too much to squeeze into a one-hour panel. What should we focus on? Gave you four choices, zero DTE explosion, options, volume explosion in general, crypto options explosion or other, and almost two-thirds of you, 64.3% saying zero day all the time. You want us to focus on that. About 18% coming in for crypto, 14.3% for options volume, and then 3.6% of you for other, which is kind of along the lines of what I thought out there, which goes to this question here from Woods, Dan. He says, do you think the massive volume in zero day index options is just a fad or does this mark a long term change for the options market going forward? Seems like everybody loves zero day, Dan. I, wouldn't, I shouldn't say everybody. There is uh, some mixed views. In fact, uh, just this past weekend in Barron's, our buddy Steve series have been on the network in the past many times, most recently on the advisors option, uh, came out in his striking price column and said the options market could have a winning role here if the industry doesn't let so-called zero-dated options overshadow the meaningful ways investors can use options to better navigate the market. Uh, he says they will continue to be a risk to the market's stability. He says these kowtow to the worst instincts of investors at the end of the day. So they're not for everybody out there. Uh, but Mr. Dan, if you were on the panel with me tomorrow, and which is like, this is the topic we will be debating what do you have to say for uh, who was it here? Woods who wants to know, do you think this uh, zero day thing, is it just a fad or is it here to stay with some long term ramifications for the options market? Um, I think it's here to stay. Um, the There's massive, massive volume in the indexes and ETFs with zero day options. Um, and it, and it's very interesting. It's not necessarily what you would think it is. It's not just all selling, you know, iron butterflies or iron condors or anything like that. It's there's buying and selling going on. And I, I would imagine that if we're seeing that volume just consistently, like we are, people are making money. And the only way that that goes away is if they're not making money anymore. And, and realistically, the only foreseeable catalyst is probably, you know, something something bad happens, like a lot of people are concerned about with the zero day options that they help exacerbate some sort of big move with a gamma squeeze type scenario. And um, and then, you know, that trade would be dead. But uh, barring that cataclysmic type scenario. I, I think they're probably just here to stay for a long, long time. We do only have jokingly referred to them as gamma bombs on the network for a reason, Dan. So, <laughs> yeah, we're all kind of waiting to see if that uh, bomb will go off. And if it does, it'll be at the worst possible moment. You know it, listeners. So uh, something certainly that is intriguing. If that kind of discussion intrigues you, we're going to get into a lot of that with a lot more data. Uh, coming up tomorrow on the panel, which, of course, you'll be hearing after the fact. If you're on the pro side, if I head on over to the pro, it's a little bit of a fun bonus. We're going to get on over to you, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro, on top of the other exclusive shows, on top of the live, on top of the giveaways, and everything else that we give you over there on the pro. We like to squeeze in some additional exclusive fun for you folks over. And this one should be a good one. Unfortunately, Dan, that music means... Uh, we are out of good times for this double header of options boot camp. How was it, sir? Did you have a good time? I did, Mark. I always have a good time doing this. I love especially answering lis listeners' questions. Yeah, we get into some wonky stuff. I love the listeners of this show. They really, from when we started this show, Dan, to the kind of questions they're asking now, just uh, an order of magnitude different, which is always fun to see. You know, we never got questions about decay on inverse vol products back in the day, right? It's like, what's a call? What's a put? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so definitely speaks to the evolution of the audience, and we love it. We like to think we had some small part to play in that, doing the show for over a decade out there. As our listener called it today, what did he call it? The best options podcast on the planet. We'll take that praise, Dan, at the end of the day. I think it could be merited out there for us. People tend to like it. So at the end of the day, we, we're happy to keep bringing it to you. And Dan, if folks want some MTM goodness in their lives in between listening to episodes of Boot Camp, where should they go? What should they do? Make your way, way on over to markettaker.com and join the community. We've got a lot of uh, complimentary uh, classes and such, especially it's great for beginners, but more experienced people can join our uh, chat room community. We've got a lot of smart folks in there, and um, we welcome you with open arms. There you go. Markettaker.com is the place to go. Don't forget the second T for Theta. 
over. That's going to do it for us on this double header today. Again, no live shows tomorrow or a week in the past if you're listening to this on demand because I will be heading down to the Securities Traders Association of Chicago. Say that five times fast for their annual midwinter meeting, a big conference. Going to have a great discussion on all things options. Stay tuned for that. Hopefully hitting the pro side coming up later on this week. And of course, stay tuned to all the rest of the great content on the network in between episodes of Boot Camp. And then we'll see you back here next Education Wednesday, another episode of Options Boot Camp. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>